Governor Christie hammered away at police and fire salary hikes again today. The 2% cap on arbitration awards expired on April 1st. And while the Senate voted unanimously to renew it, the Assembly is holding out for a more flexible version. Christie says the arbitration cap has led to a 24-year low in property tax growth. There's very few things we find in government that actually work. We actually stumbled onto one. This works. And they refuse to do it. And the reason they refuse to do it, in my opinion, is because the people who donate so generously to their campaigns the PBA, the FOP, the FMBA are telling them they don't want it. Why? Because they want to go back to the old system of four, five, six percent plus raises. Christie called out Assembly Speaker Vincent Prieto for not going along with a concept Prieto supported four years ago. Under Prieto's less stringent version, Christie said 85 percent of municipalities could escape the 2 percent cap. Yesterday, the governor stood with mayors and county officials to support a strict cap and urged his audience today to put pressure on the assembly. Get a majority of votes to force the speaker to bring it to the floor. I can tell you, you'll get all 32 Republican votes for that, which means we only need nine brave Democrats. The state's major newspapers endorse the stricter cap. Police and fire unions argue their members have lost ground because of higher pension and benefit costs. Speaker Prieto last night on this program offered to sit down with the governor. I am committed in a timely fashion to put something forward. The speaker now says he just wants to negotiate with me. Well, what's to negotiate? We have a system that works. An hour of question and answer followed, but was largely uneventful. The media at these town halls keep waiting for someone to ask the governor about the bridge scandal, but it rarely happens. Christie says that's because regular people have more important things on their minds. We spoke to a couple in the audience who seemed to agree. It seems like it's dying down. It seems like people are moving on. We have people here with you know, no jobs, no health insurance, no houses to live in, no, you know, medical marijuana, no tax money to fix the potholes. We don't have rock salt. We have issues in this state that are a little bit more concrete than um, chasing the governor around to ask him about bridge gate. Several dozen protesters turned out, some to criticize his taxpayer-funded legal report, but Christie was indoors in his element. In Somerset, I'm Michael Aaron, NJTV News. And joining us now live on the set is our chief political correspondent, Michael Aaron. We welcome you back. Uh, you're looking great and fit. It's good to have you back, my friend. Thank you. Good to be back. Following the governor, I, I mean, he's been through a lot lately. Uh, the town hall meetings, he's in his territory, you would say. Uh, but does he appear to have been impacted at all by all of the Bridgegate, so, quote unquote, th events that have happened as of late? He does a great job of pretending not, but the air around him from a journalist point of view, is still charged with Bridgegate. You just saw some protesters. Uh, they were probably 500 feet away, but they seemed 100 miles away from Christie. He's in his own world when he's doing the town meetings. Uh, you project onto him this notion that he's at the center of a still unfolding story slash scandal, uh, but he does a terrific job of putting it all aside. We, we see from elements now that have been released from the Mastro Report and other sources uh, a number of interesting things. Uh, the fact is he was interviewed by three attorneys, it appears, for the report they commissioned on the bridge scandal investigation. One of the attorneys who interviewed him, uh, Deborah Wang Yang, was, is a friend, uh, a colleague of sorts as well. Uh, what does that tell you? Well, it raises eyebrows uh, among those who are suspicious of the Mastro Report, or skeptical, I should say, about the Mastro Report. Uh, from what I know, uh, Deborah Wong Yang uh, was a former U.S. attorney in California. And when Chris Christie famously uh, awarded mon federal monitorships to seven people, including David Sampson and uh, John Ashcroft, Ashcroft's was worth 40 or 50 million dollars, uh, Wong Yang apparently received one. Whether they were friends before that, I don't know, but they have subsequently vacationed uh, the two families together. So what she's doing when her uh, law firm colleagues and partners are interviewing the governor, 
What she's doing in the room is unclear. We also pick up interesting information about two other people linked to the governor. David Sampson, for instance, recently resigned as chairman of the Port Authority. Uh, we, we hear that he was involved perhaps in, in vetting the governor's cabinet? Apparently, uh, he called Richard Constable, the Commissioner of Community Affairs, sometime in August or September, and said, by the way, do you intend to serve in a second term? And the implication that press reports are drawing out of that is that Sampson was so close to Christie that he was involved in shaping a second term uh, roster of cabinet officers for the governor. And then the name Bridget Kelly comes up as, as well. Uh, very briefly, though, just that, that she was actually directing Constable in some respects. Uh, the, what really comes out of th these memos that were released yesterday is the notion that there was favoritism going on uh, coming out of the governor's office. Not that that's necessarily unusual, but uh, Richard Constable had to get Bridget Kelly's approval to go meet with Steve Fulop, the mayor of Jersey City. That's pretty unusual. Well, we're going to put a call on to Mr. Constable and, and let him respond to that, to, to those reports and those stories out there. And uh, we, needless to say, are very grateful to have you back, my friend. Thanks, Mike. We'll be right back.